Hi, I'm George, and we'll be doing an Affinity Photo HDR, or High Dynamic Range Photo. Now for this you need a series of photographs. I have five taken here. The brightest one is up here, the darkest one is right down here, and these were taken on a tripod, and then I just adjusted the exposure to get a range of images over different exposure levels. Now notice that the brightest one here is pretty good values for what's inside, but you can't see anything out the window. The darkest one has the best view outside the window, so you want to have something kind of in between combining the best parts of these images using some of this stuff over here. And you can do that with Affinity Photo. Very easy to do. Go up to File, come down here to New HDR Merge, open this up, and then add in your pictures. Click on Add, and I have my five pictures right here. See, there's the darkest over to the brightest. I'll just select all of that, hit the Open button. There we are. There are now a few options to choose from down here. You can automatically align images. Two choices, perspective and scale, rotate and translate. I'll use that one. Since these are all on a tripod, there shouldn't be much of a movement in there. Automatically remove ghosts. It's a good idea. It just helps to remove any duplicating of images. You can use noise reduction or not if you want to. That's the default. I'll leave it at that. Tone map HDR image. Again, I'll leave that at the default as well. Click OK. And it's then going to process this whole image. You can see it happening down there on the right hand side. Once it's been processed, we'll then have a lot more options in here. There we go. That's done. I can hide these things. I'm not actually using those. Get those out of the way. And we'll bring up our main image here. And let's get this to fit just a little bit better. There we go. Looks pretty good. Okay, so we can see now we have nice exposure here inside the room. And we also can see the outside. So it has given us that high dynamic range. The stuff that was dark in here has been fixed. Stuff that was too bright outside has been fixed as well. Now you have different options. Left hand side, there's a lot of presets over here. Here's the default. This is a neutral setting or natural look. There's a detailed look. It's just been pushed with the sharpness a little bit down here. There's a cool look. High contrast black and white. And also down here is a dramatic look. It's kind of punching up the colors and the sharpness a bit. Just choose one that you like the best. I'll go with the detailed look here. And then we'll go over to the right hand side. You can do a bit more adjusting in here. We have our tone map. You can adjust your color values in here, white balance, shadows, highlights, all this stuff is available to you. Notice the scroll bar right hand side. I can scroll this up or down and we have more options. Now looking at this, I think it's pretty good, but maybe the blacks are a little bit washed out. You can use a bit more contrast, a bit more blacks on the black side. So let's go over here to the right hand side. We'll scroll down. We have exposure black point and brightness and I think the black point is what this needs. Now you can either use the slider control or type in a number or just kind of walk your way through with this button right here. This is the easiest if it's just a real small adjustment and somewhere in here that one or maybe this. This is a little bit on the dark side so I think right there we still retain some detail back in that black stuff in the corner. Let's take a look at our exposure. We can go up a bit on that too much. Go down a little bit in the negative. I think exposure is right on. And let's just check our brightness as well. Not much of a change happening with the brightness. I'll just leave that at the zero setting. Contrast, saturation, vibrance. Maybe a little more saturation in here. Just a bit more on the colors. I'll bring that up just carefully. That's quite a ways actually, but I think that looks good. 10% increase on the saturation. And as you can see, it's really very easy to do. The whole thing depends though on your initial images. You need to be able to capture all the values with your first images. So place your camera on a tripod. That's the best way to do it. So there's not a whole lot of motion that has to be fixed in there. And then make sure you go to a broad range. Find what you think is the right exposure and use that as your middle setting. And then go a bit over and a bit underexposed. I went two stops either side of my middle image. And that gave me just what I needed to get a nice range to work with. And then Affinity Photo can pull all that together for this nice HDR merge. Now, if you want to find out more about how to use Affinity Photo, take a look at my complete training course. There's a link for that in the description, and I'll see you next time.